Hi, this is Jay and Silva, artist and founder of Animus, the platform bringing the artist to the center stage of Web3. I'm here on The Edge of NFT, the podcast where the art of Web3 can always shine bright. Keep listening. Hi, NFT curious listeners. Stay tuned for today's episode to learn how the Web3 artist Jay and Silva is taking Animus users on a philosophically rich journey of utility and art on the blockchain. Plus, the incredible story of how our guest's first purchase resulted in a robbery at knife point. Finally, here are the details behind Infinite Connections, the recent drop from the legendary Web3 Voyager, none other than William Shatner. And before we go, don't forget that our Outer Edge LA event recently returned to LA March 20th to the 23rd, 2023. Hey, you can now catch up on all the discussions, presentations, and more. Just head over to watch.outeredge.live and register with only your email address. Then you'll have access to over 60 captivating conversations and performances. Binge watchers are welcome. See you inside. Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's episode features J.N. Silva of Animus, the artist collective dedicated to advancing the future of the NFT crypto space. J.N. Silva is a Venezuelan-born photographer with a keen eye for the decisive moment. His eclectic photography Photographic style has allowed him to pursue different avenues in photography, ranging from street and portraiture to live music and aerial photography. Most recently, his artwork has been displayed and sold at the prestigious Sotheby's Auction House alongside the all-time greats. With a career that spans over a decade, Silva has showcased his work all around the world and has a long history of building and fostering community across mediums. A former educator, J.N. has taught photography workshops and led photo walks all over the world while working with major brands and photographing iconic images of the world's leading artists. His recent entry into the NFT world marked a clear shift for the photography community, and he has onboarded hundreds, if not thousands, of artists in the world of NFTs via his artist collective, Animus. Animus is a collective of artists dedicated to bridging the divide between the traditional and digital art worlds by harnessing the benefits of Web 2 and Web 3 tech. They are fostering meaningful connections within our community and encouraging exploration and experimentation. Jan, welcome to Edge of NFT. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. This is going to be fun. Thanks for the intro too. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You, you did it all. I just had to read about it. <laughs> Yeah, man, it was, it was great to have you at Outer Edge this year and start to get to know each other. And of course, um, this is event season. So we also had a chance to catch up. And in Austin, I was just like, wow, we, we got to have you on the show. We have to sort of unpack your story and what you're up to a little bit more. No, I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming through our event in uh, Austin. It, it was a really good time. It was great seeing you. And I had a blast at uh, Outer Edge as well. My panel was on community building uh which i feel like is my specialty so yeah grateful you know for the invite yeah absolutely well let's let's start at, at the beginning of, of animus how did this platform come into being and, and what's it all about yeah for sure so i mean i'll start a little bit earlier uh i got into crypto in 2017 and you know i'm venezuelan uh you know hyperinflation is kind of what destroyed our economy. So when someone like really sat down and explained Bitcoin to me, I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense. Hedge against, you know, hyperinflation. And I'm one of those people that like, when I get into something, I just become like mega focused on learning as much as I can. And, you know, I spent all of 2017 and 18 and 19 just learning as much as I could about blockchain in general, even through, you know, the bear market of 18 and 19. Uh, and then in 2020, you know, I was still doing a ton of photography work. It was supposed to be the busiest year of my life uh, with kind of like regular client work. 
And in March, you know, one week to the next, lost all my work, all my friends lost all our work, all my creative friends uh, because of the pandemic. And, you know, there was this moment where I was like, all right, what the hell can I do now? Uh, and, you know, I figured I can day trade, I can do crypto. And, you know, I started paying attention again to what was going on in blockchain. And sure enough, as, as soon as the government turned the printer back on, I was like, oh, this is exactly what we've been waiting for, right? It's like, th this is the value proposition of, of blockchain. And, you know, I saw this opportunity kind of like emerging for creatives because at the time, you know, there were a lot of genius developers and, and people in, 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 in the space but their creative and marketing side of things were, you know, kind of lacking, let's say. And I found myself, you know, having all of these friends who are like super creative, amazing artists all over the world uh, that were out of work. And all of these people in blockchain that were seriously needing creative <laughs> advice. Uh, so that's when I started to, you know, create Animus. And at first we were just kind of like advising and helping a lot of the projects that were launching in 2020. Uh, you know, during DeFi summer, we we were helping them with marketing, you know, making decks. And eventually a few of those projects were like, well, can you make NFTs for us? And I was like, oh, yeah, we can make NFTs, right? That's just like, just have to make the art and you guys can mint it. And, you know, it started as that, just connecting amazing artists with amazing developers. And eventually, you know, as more demand came in, I was like, all right, let me start animus to to kind of have like an organized umbrella where we can do all these things and as we grew i realized that we don't really want to have this like agency model which is kind of how we started uh i wanted it to be more about like empowering the artists because you know th this was after all like a new paradigm it wasn't like web 2 where i was just like t hiring these artists for hire you know i wanted them to kind of like be a part of it all and you know, we kind of shifted to be becoming an artist collective. And at the same time, you know, I was going, you know, I was very vocal on all my social media uh, platforms about Web3 and NFTs. And everyone thought I was going crazy because it was in the middle of the pandemic. And they were like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, and then I figured, you know, maybe we can use Animus to onboard artists. And, you know, I made a lot of presentations, a lot of decks. We, you know, I curated a ton of articles and links and, and we put it all on this like huge Padlet link. And I was just like calling friends up literally every day and being like, you need to come on to Web3, you need to learn about NFTs. And that was like all of my second half of 2020 and first half of 2021 was like getting on calls and onboarding artists. And, you know, from there, Animus grew, uh, you know, to hundreds of artists that enter the space through us. And, you know, we, we did a lot of advising for a lot of marketplaces early on. Uh, and then we started hosting events, starting with uh, BTC Miami in 2021. And since then, we've hosted, you know, in-person events at a lot of the major conferences. Uh, and yeah, our whole thing is just empowering artists and, and you know, helping artists grow and helping them navigate uh, this ecosystem, whether that's through, you know, advising, whether that's to like helping with moral support, mental health things. Uh, and it, it's been really awesome, very fulfilling experience so far. That's an, that's amazing stuff, man. And, and thank you for sort of breaking down the whole story. And, you know, as you're talking about sort of the need for creativity in this space, um, you know, I'm just reflecting on my early days of uh, in crypto in 2017 and 18, and um, I'm sure Ethan, Richard, you can relate. There were some really bad cut and paste websites out there. Pretty much every single project um, was <laughs> following the same like WordPress templates, right? Um, I don't even think Wix was around then, and there was no culture in the space, right? And and so. Uh, it was all it was all about just basic language, basic marketing jargon, um, technical teams. And what got us excited to start the podcast um, about the same time you were getting really fired up, March of 2021, is we saw a cultural revolution here where some of the traditional principles of, of crypto were intersecting with the opportunities that the digital collections had with the intersection of like pure culture, like something that like we all needed and we're looking for in a, in a relatively um, de desperate time in our society. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And I think, you know, I commend anyone who saw that opportunity early on 
And, you know, it, funny enough, in March of 2021, uh, I was a guest on the Joe Budden podcast. I don't know if you guys know Joe Budden, but, you know, he's a rapper team, turned podcaster and he runs a huge, huge podcast. And I've been friends with him for, you know, over a decade. And I asked him, I was like, I've never asked him for a favor before. I was like, please let me go on your podcast and talk to people about NFTs. And he let me on. Uh, I want to say it was actually late February of 2021. And I remember I went on the podcast and, you know, that clip ended up getting like millions of views. And still to this day, when, you know, whenever like any platform asks like, oh, how'd you learn about NFTs? A lot of people tag me and they're like, yeah, through Silva on the Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden podcast. So it's like, I can't even measure how many people, you know, got that like first hint of curiosity from, from that. And yeah, anyone that I'm still trying, right? I'm, I'm still, you know, an advocate for the space. There's still people who like don't quite see it yet. I think we went through this like crazy hype cycle and, and a lot of people are like, oh, I told you, you know, it was all a fad, right? And and people still have trouble kind of seeing the long-term vision of it all, but, you know, we got to keep showing up every day. Indeed. And and at the moment here, you are minting your Animus key card um, and, uh that is kind of like the NFT entry into that ecosystem. So yeah, tell us a little bit about, about that and how it plays into the, the collective. Yeah, for sure. So the Animus key card is something we've been working on for over a year and we wanted, you know, kind of like to tokenize uh, entry into our, our ecosystem. We have a, a very active Telegram chat. We we chose not to do Discord because I've, I've seen just so many people get scammed on Discord and I'd be heartbroken if one of our Animus community uh, members got scammed, you know, by our Discord in, in any way. So we, we chose to keep our community on Telegram and we've been growing and we wanted, again, to tokenize entry into our ecosystem. And what that means is like, you know, becoming the VIP of the Animus community, right? And, you know, it, it's also a way for us to get art into the hands of, of the holders, right? Uh, the core Animus team is myself and four of my best friends in the world. And we make a lot of stuff. We, we make a ton of art. And up till now, you know, we've done it either by collaborations or different personal projects where we release it. But we wanted to have something kind of like under the Animus lore. Uh, and if you go on our website, you know, you'll see we have this very like deep and kind of like philosophical lore. I studied philosophy in college and, and like philosophy changed my life. So like everything that I do is kind of like imbued with philosophy. And we created kind of this like story uh, behind Animus that is like deeply rooted in a lot of different philosophical concepts. And we wanted to get that out. And it's almost like a story that we're telling through blockchain. And we kind of held on just for different reasons. And, and we wanted to like really strategize on how to do this properly. And for me, one major thing that was kind of like halting the release was the gas fees, right? Like in 2021, uh, the gas fees were just like astronomical. And I was like, ah, like I, it didn't sit right with me to release this because, you know, I'm, I'm Venezuelan and, you know, I have a, I onboarded a ton of artists from South America and, and kind of just like all uh, different, let's say, underrepresented communities and nations. And for them, you know, for us, yeah, you know, you might pay $30 on a gas transaction here and there, $50. But for someone in South America, that's like food for a week almost, right? And you, you don't have that privilege to be like minting stuff for $50 just like as you go. Uh, so I wanted to find a solution to bring the fees down. And that's why, you know, after us doing a ton of research and talking to a lot of different teams, uh, we entered a partnership with the Arbitrum team uh, just because, you know, as an aside, I'm a huge gamer. I've been a gamer my whole life. And I entered the Arbitrum ecosystem uh, via Treasure Down Magic. And I, I was doing a ton of gaming on there last year. And I just really enjoyed, uh, you know, what they stand for and what they've been building uh, on Arbitrum. And, you know, funny enough, I'm, I'm good friends with a few people on the team. And you know, unbeknownst to me, a lot of them were in the Animus Telegram and, and they reached out and they're like, hey, we really like what you're doing. This seems like a very organic artist community. How can we help you empower more artists uh, just in the space? And I was like, oh, like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, we just kind of like want to help artists. And, you know, we'd love to have more art on, on Arbitrum because right now there's a lot of PFPs, there's a lot of gaming projects, there's not a lot of art on there. So we saw that as kind of like a perfect opportunity to enter this partnership and, you know, release the Animus key card uh, via Arbitrum. And yeah, we started minting about two weeks ago. Uh, it's a fairly limited supply of a little bit over a thousand. And what the Animus key card is gonna, you know, kind of like 
get you is just a lot of art. You know, we're working on a lot of projects. Uh, I'm I'm doing some personal projects on there, and we're just gonna start like airdropping and releasing and and doing claims for artwork. Uh, and two, you know, if, if you have the key card, you're kind of like you'll be the VIP at our uh, in-person events, right? So for this event in Austin, you know, the first kind of like wave of signups to come, we're all Animus key card holders. Uh, we reserved, you know, the free merch that, that we made for the event for the key card holders. And once, you know, every key card holder was satisfied, then we opened it up to the public. Uh, and we're going to start doing, you know, more and more things like that. So, you know, holding a key card will, will have you be, you know, the VIP of our ecosystem. Nice. Yeah. That sounds a lot like a lot of fun. And uh, so, so, so Josh, have you been to one of these events? Did I, did I miss it? Is this uh is yeah, this, uh, the case? yeah. I, yes? mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know if that qualified as one of these official events, but um, you know, there was a, a said uh, event on on Friday uh, before the thunderstorms, where it was pretty chill, just a um, bunch of artists hanging out, some some good tacos, um, <laughs> some art, like uh, some some good music. Uh, am I leaving anything out? Did you get to check out the laser installation in there? No, I missed the laser installation. Yeah, no, but that, I mean, that kind of covers it, right? I think everyone uh, or a lot of people in this space always think they have to throw this like grandiose mega jam. Where everyone's going crazy with the loud pumping music. And I'll tell you what, the artists do not like that. We, I don't want to be somewhere where I can't hear people speak, right? Like I, I want to be in places where I can like talk to people and connect and, and have fun and just have like a more chill vibe. And like our, our Animus Telegram is called the Animus Lounge. And for all our events, we try to like, harness that uh, that feeling of just like being somewhere with friends and creatives and, and you know kind of like uh embracing the connection there uh and, and that's where our event in austin was all about there were really good tacos uh we had a lot of art we had this uh incredible artist laser lou came and he he does these like in-person laser crystal installations uh you don't get to check it out but it, they're unbelievable uh we partner with this incredible artist uh ali al grime and she did a whole mural outside of the venue and that same design you know that's what we put on the on the merchandise for the event and yeah you know it, it's just all about getting artists to get together and connect and for us it's always about the quality of the people uh, at our events and, and not the quantity of the people. So we, you know, specifically curate our lists uh, kind of like very tight. So our event is never like too packed, uh, which for me is like incredible because again, it's kind of like that, like relaxing, recharging uh, environment, right? Like I, I want I people to, to, to leave the Animus events recharged and not like, oh God, I'm so drained. Yeah, I have to agree. I, I I hate it when I'm at an event where there's lots of cool people, but I can't hear anything of what any of them is saying. Mm -hmm. The only critique yeah. I have here, listen, I wasn't there, but I'm I through Venezuela. I feel like you should have some arepas I in, in addition to those tacos. That's all. Hundred percent. No, arepas are <laughs> arepas and tarqueños are a must at, at any event. <laughs> But I didn't trust that. I don't want to get someone in Austin and, and you know <laughs> get some suspect arepas on board. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, in Miami, we definitely always have the arepas. I hear you. Yeah. And I mean, and there's a couple of things that you brought up that I want to just go back and touch briefly on. And, and the first being the ability for access. So like you were saying with ETH, someone having to pay $35 plus, uh, I mean, during the bullish times, you know, you're paying $100 up to $1,000 in peak times. And it's it's a barrier to entry. And so being able to go with uh, uh, Arbitrum and having a, a way to have more access for people, I think is setting up the future for getting more people involved and getting meeting artists where they are and, and, and finding a way to get them onboarded. And, and in that same regard, you know, you're currently working as an executive producer of the Buscanado American Project. And for anyone who has tried to make a featured film, you know how hard and challenging it is to do that. And the, the access to be able to become a part of that is extremely difficult. So can you tell us a little bit about that project and, and how you're able to get some of those uh, NFTs as, as being featured on OpenSea? Yeah, 100%. So, you know, those are my two biggest projects for sure, the Animus Collective and Busan America. And they kind of like overlap, uh, you know, they're, we're both families. 
and you know animus studios which is you know under the animus umbrella you know uh me and my co-founder phil phil Yoon, who's one of my best friends we went to college together we've been doing kind of like you know short and long form content for over 10 years right that's kind of like our web 2 careers where you know doing photography and videography for festivals artists events music videos just storytelling right through through photos and videos and we feel that this is still severely lacking in web3 and that's why you know we have anime studios and under that umbrella we kind of like have made and produced a, you know a few short form storytelling projects uh i, I guess most recently we did this piece with uh Corey van lu and farouk for rug radio for the faces of web3 mint uh we did kind of like a five minute short documentary on Corey van lu and his process um and yeah, so th that's our purpose with Anima Studio. And Anima Studio kind of like produced uh, this first short documentary that we're doing with Buscando America. And Buscando America is, you know, very much a passion project. I was introduced to one of the directors, Nello. Uh, he's a brilliant, brilliant Venezuelan filmmaker, uh, Emmy nominated. He he made a documentary about the Venezuelan protest uh, of 2017 and, and beyond that was nominated for an Emmy last year. And yeah, someone just said you two should know, know each other just because you know you're both very much into obviously the Venezuelan culture and, and kind of like repping the flag and all this stuff. And see the flag right here. Um, and we met, we chatted, and he was like about to enter Web three, and he just wanted some advice. And he's like, hey, you know, me and my you know one of my best friends uh, living in Medellin wrote a script together over the pandemic, uh, and we shot a little teaser for what we want this film to look like you know, I, I just want to get your opinion on, you know, how I can go about it. These things, there's a future for it. He just wanted to kind of like, you know, my, my thoughts. And, you know, I checked out the script. I looked at this teaser. I saw the deck and immediately I, I was just like so blown away. I was like, how can I be a part of this? Like, please let me in. I want to like help you bring this thing to life. Uh, and so I came on as the executive producer and kind of like the Web3 strategist. And, you know, to be perfectly frank, I don't think, you know, there's a, a big film three community, uh, you know, and there are different projects that are at different stages of production. Uh, to this day, there is not one completed full film that's out that can say we fundraised the whole thing and went from zero to this via NFTs. Uh, you know, I respect a, a lot of the projects. We have a, some amazing, you know, friends in the film three community. And, you know, we're all figuring out, figuring it out as we go. And what we're doing is we broke the stages of, uh, you know, kind of like the stages of making a film into different parts. And at every part, we're going to be dropping an NFT project to kind of like fund that stage and get us to the next one. Right. So kind of with, you know, money that we had from the Anima Studio Fund and, you know, with a lot of help from my friends at Sony, uh, I'm a Sony ambassador, so I've been working with Sony on their camera side for over 10 years now. And Sony, you know, lent us all this gear to go to Medellin. And we went to Medellin for 12 days last year. And we did a whole canvas of the whole city, you know, doing location scouting, character scouting, uh, getting into some places that, you know, no one is really allowed to go into um, and interviewing some very, very, very interesting people all over Medellin. And we put together a short documentary. Uh, it's a 20 minute documentary. You can watch it on YouTube now. It's called Idiosyncrasia. And, you know, we turned all of our scouting, you know, the, the, the documentary photography that we did into this first collection, also called Idiosyncrasia. And we turned it into a whole collection. It's 2,500 one of one photos from, you know, our time in Medellin. And the photos are from myself and the two directors of the film, uh, Nelson and Nello and Alex. Uh, Alex is also a brilliant filmmaker, music video director, uh, you know, born and raised in Medellin. And our whole purpose is, you know, we want to showcase the real pretty much, right? Like in a lot of these, like, you know, in a lot of our countries, we feel that our culture is kind of like misrepresented a lot of the times by other uh, cultures, right? Like, for example, in Medellin, you have series like Narcos, right? And, and you know, when you ask someone in Medellin or in Colombia how they feel about Narcos, they're like, well, you know, these foreigners came, they rented, you know, kind of like a village, a deserted village way outside of town. They hired all these foreign actors, they hired all these foreign writers, and they came and they tried to tell a story about our people, 
right? So it doesn't feel genuine and there's a lot of like misrepresentation there. So our whole thing is showing like what, what the real culture is like uh, in Medellin and our film uh, is gonna tackle a lot of issues, but mainly corruption in South America and how that corruption has been so pervasive that it's uh, driven out a lot of the major talent over the last few decades. And I mean, that's a story of like myself and a lot of people who, you know, we were forced to leave our countries to chase better pastures because of like the overwhelming corruption. Uh, but yeah, you know, we we have a lot of amazing, amazing supporters. Uh, we first premiered the film. We did a very, very short sneak peek at uh, NFT NYC last year. We rented out a whole uh, theater and we, we threw an event called NFTC where we rented out the, the whole theater in South Street Seaport. And then we showed another version of it at Art Basel. And we officially released it, uh, you know, the, the actual documentary uh, three weeks ago now. Uh, and yeah, we have amazing supporters. You know, someone from the OpenSea team saw it and they were like, holy crap, this is incredible. How can we support? Uh, and they gave us, yeah, they gave us the full, you know, feature drop. We were on the OpenSea front page for two days. It's the first time any film project has been a feature drop on OpenSea. Uh, first time a full-fledged photography project has been a, the, the feature drop on OpenSea. And we, you know, we're doing this collaborative thing with them, you know, as, as a long term, because making a movie is a long term project. Uh, so, yeah, we've been, you know, working nonstop and excited to get that going. Well, first so, off, congratulations. That is absolutely huge news. Um, secondly, I think this is a great reminder for everyone listening, the power of going in person. Uh, he was able to meet someone that you went on to help create this with. So the power of being in person. And then finally, just again, People can resonate with the story, and especially when you look at a lot of these NFT projects, you look at the team and everything around it, they, they try to get into the, the story of like why this is around and why it's here. And it sounds like there's a lot of people who are really resonating with your vision of, of what you have for this NFT project. So cool stuff, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and you know, my main purpose right now is just getting people to watch the documentary because I feel like once you see that, then everything else makes sense, right? So I'm just like going everywhere like hey 20 minutes of your time i know that's like an impossible ask in today's attention economy but 20 minutes watch this it's free on youtube and everything else will make sense like what we're doing will make sense yeah I, well i think you convinced the three of us to <laughs> go ahead and, and and check it out i'll be i'll be tuning into it tonight and looking forward to that um just out of curiosity with open c do they have a, a film three department that reached out to you or was it the entertainment division or, or? No, yeah, it wasn't any of their divisions. I had some contacts on the photography side. And, and I think if you look it up, it's under photography because the NFTs themselves are photos. Uh, but no, I don't think they have a, a film category yet. It's very, very small. There's only like, you know, I want to say like five or six projects. Uh, with like three of them being like the main ones that have gotten funding and have gotten to that next step. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, we've had David Bianchi on, on the show yeah. and, and good you friends. Know, he actually just minted one of our pieces last night. So shout out David Bianchi, big supporter. Yeah, yeah. Love that guy. We, we love we love David. And you know, I know Miguel Faust is is cooking up something, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I, I hope we have a lot more to talk about in this genre. Um, you know, by by next year. I mean you know, Outer Edge is all about that intersection of technology and entertainment. So it's something that's near and dear to our heart uh, to celebrate at, at um, Outer Edge LA in March. And, um, you know, I think I think there'll be uh, more activity in the space over the next year than there was in the past year. And, and, and you're part of this growing movement. But I wanted to also touch on the personal side of, of you as an artist and, and a creator. Um, you know, as well. And I, I know you've done some some pretty cool projects, including a successful drop with Thank You X and, and being part of the timepiece community. We just had Maya on the show actually last week. Um, amazing. Another amazing human. Um, like, what is your personal artwork sort of um, story and, and trajectory um, in this space? And what what are you sort of thinking about sort of beyond what you've created so far? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I entered the space kind of like as a, a pure photographer. I mean, I've been a photographer for, again, probably 20 years now. And I feel like that's what most people have always known me for is just my photography. But, you know, in 2020, over the pandemic, I was already kind of like 
experimenting with different mediums and you know for me music is, is one of those mediums i'm like a huge huge music fan i was doing a ton of music photography before the pandemic and you know for me it is one of my biggest if not my biggest passion is just music right like i've studied it i you know i i listen to a ton of music all the time I mean, you'll never see me without these headphones and over the pandemic i started kind of like learning how to produce and started you know learning a lot of music theory and things like this and at the same time, uh, I kind of fell down this rabbit hole of fractal art. I saw a documentary on George Mandelbrot and just fractal sets and, and math equations. And I, again, I just fell down this, you know, 12 hours later, I was like trying to understand all these math equations and figuring out how I can make fractal art. And it was something that was like extremely relaxing to me. It's just like, you know, again, while the pandemic was going on, me just like experimenting on these fractal programs and like literally looking at the math that makes the universe run in a visualized form, you know, and colorized form. And I just found it like extremely fascinating. Uh, this was all when I was learning about NFT. So when like I entered the space, I was already, you know, excited to be experimenting with, with new things and new mediums. And, you know, I was introduced to Thank UX and we immediately got along uh, and we decided to collaborate for our first project because we wanted to do something cool and, and exciting that, you know, people hadn't seen before. Uh, and we did our first drop uh, on December of 2020, you know, it sold out immediately, did extremely well at the time. I think it was like the highest grossing collabor uh, collaboration on Nifty Gateway. We did a second drop, uh, second collaborative drop a few months later, and that one was even crazier. That was in March. Uh, and then from there, you know, I feel like a lot of people just heard of us from those two drops uh, just because, you know, they, they performed so well and they were kind of so iconic for that time period. Uh, and then since then, you know, I've done a few solo photography drops, but I've also been experimenting a bunch with kind of like the fusion of psychedelic fractal art, uh, you know, by itself, psychedelic fractal art fused with my photography, uh, all those mixed with music. You know, recently I started doing like fractal art photography that was animated via AI with my music on it. You know, so I'm all about experimenting and, and that's kind of like my thing, right? Like if you, if you're following along, I'm always about progressing and kind of like not staying stagnant and just like exploring new mediums. Uh, and that's what I've been doing. You know, my, my Sotheby's piece uh, was a combination of like fractal art and photography. Uh, and, you know, it went for, I think almost close to 10 times the estimate that, you know, they had given it. Uh, so it did very well on Sotheby's and I, I've also done a bunch of like collage drops uh, for charity last year i did a the project uh doctor 1919 or doctor 1919 uh was a charity drop uh that gave money to uh this uh archdiocese in caracas which is the, the capital of venezuela to you know get money into the hands of their education system and that was all kind of like collage work with my fractal mixed in it uh and then recently i've gotten more into like live installations so for uh the gateway nft now's art basil world uh i got to build out a whole you know full room installation in collaboration with instagram uh and that went really well too everyone seemed to really really love it i created this like fractal meditation room where i made like you know a long fractal uh piece and then i did a, a eight hour soundscape uh, and then I kind of just like, you know, made the whole room feel like this like tripped out fractal world and just asked people to go in there and meditate. Uh, and that also went really well. So that's what I'm like kind of transitioning into. I'd love to do more physical artwork. And, you know, I'm actually talking to a few people here in Miami to create just like large scale physical works. That's so cool. Yeah, I was going to say, like, why not do some live stuff now? Um, we just had Jeremy Coward on the show last week, and he's got this live minting experience. But of course, you're already on to the next thing. And it just kind of tells me sort of what an innovator and disruptor you are. In fact, uh, you know, I, I think, Ethan, around the time of that Sotheby's auction, you were saying, should I should I go for this piece? It's, it's going to be 10 times more than I wanted. Mm -hmm. But should I just snag it anyways? I just um, went for it. I just yeah. went for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just, it's just money. Yeah. If it costs you, it costs you. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so what you don't know, Jan, is that, um, you know, Ethan is, is also sort of a, a polymath that crosses music and math. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm just super curious what his reaction is to some of your uh, inspiration. Yeah, we got to hang out. 
uh that's all i gotta say <laughs> yeah man 100 yeah. you inspired me to, stuff. you inspired me with your uh immersive fractal meditative experience i have uh i actually have a float tent uh you know these float tanks i don't know if you've ever mm -hmm. done it oh yeah yeah but i've been really interested in them for many years always wanted one and you can get like a tent version which is a lot less expensive but similar experience and I've actually had it for months, but it's been a slow going to get it set up. I'm almost there. I have eight. I just ordered 800 pounds of Epsom salts from uh, from like Walmart yes. or something. It, <laughs> it all showed yes. up like stacks and stacks of Epsom salts in my door a week ago. But yeah, I'm sure you'd you'd be into it. Um, yeah. And also, have you checked out Stephen Wolfram? No. OK, so look well, up Stephen. Yeah, look up Stephen Wolfram. Uh, he wrote a book many years ago, by, by this time called a new kind of science. And it's all about these uh, cell, cellular automaton and the fractal, you know, implications and all this type of stuff where you see it in, in, uh, in nature and biology. Um, actually, he's a, <clears throat> I believe he's an advisor on one of our previous guest projects on the super world uh, oh, NFT. Amazing project uh i believe uh stephen wolfram is involved there somehow Man, i feel like i i listened to one of his audiobooks uh and it was like the, the fractal nature of reality or something like that could be he's he's he was like one of these child prodigies and you know basically knew the secrets of the universe by like 12 or something um Incredible. so anyways <laughs> i do want to hear i do want to hear a little bit more about the charity initiatives you did mention dr 1919 and and that's on really interesting um and you've got some stuff some other stuff going on I, I know there's things that have some themes around the political situation in Ve venezuela as well can you just share a little bit more about what's going on on that side of things yeah for sure i think last year you know after the big study study sale I, I felt like i want to take a little break from kind of like personal projects and you know even though i'm always like making art uh you know i kind of want to take a break from releasing art i also had hip surgery last july so i knew that i was going to be kind of like a slower period for myself as i recovered um but after that sale i kind of looked you know to only say yes to anything that was like giving back to communities right so i, I did a bunch of charity stuff i did the doctor uh, dr 1919 project was probably the most prominent one uh you know it was kind of produced by cisneros media and, and the cisneros family they're you know a, a very uh humanitarian focused venezuelan family who have done a, a ton of incredible initiatives worldwide uh they're also like some of the biggest patrons of uh latin american uh, art and heritage and you know their collection they, they've kind of like loaned and given their collection to many many museums uh all over the world so they have the biggest collection of like latin american art uh and they came to me you know i i was lucky enough to meet with them and they came to me with a, an idea to do this project with 19 different Venezuelan artists. Uh, and in Venezuela, we have kind of this like religious figure that if you're Venezuelan, you kind of like grew up with this doctor. Uh, his name is Dr. Jose Gregorio Hernandez. Uh, and he was a real life doctor that, you know, in the 1800s and early 1900s traveled all the, over Europe. And then when he came back to Venezuela, he actually brought back all of this like science from all his learnings. He was like a genius. Uh, also polymath, and he was just like curing diseases left and right in Venezuela, right? Because he brought back all of these, uh, you know, new tools to to the country, and so he people started to see him as a saint, and eventually, you know, they they started to like really uh, believe in the power of his healing, and it's one of those things that like you know, anytime I, I grew up in a very uh, deeply Catholic family, and anytime I would get sick, like my grandmother would take out the the doctor statue, come pray to it you know she said that he saved my uncle from like almost dying and there's like many many miracles that have been attributed to him um so he's actually on the process of being recognized as a, as a saint uh by the catholic church he's like one step or like right before it uh so this is now family had this idea to get 19 venezuelan artists he, he passed away in 1919 the year 1919 so that's why it's called dr 1919 um and so they had the idea to get 19 Venezuelan artists and have each artist create uh, 101 pieces of uh, generative art uh, and then, you know, so sell the collection and have all that money again go to the Archdiocese of Caracas and, you know, they do a, a ton of humanitarian outreach over there and uh, when I was born and raised in Venezuela and I actually went to a Catholic school for, you know, my, my first 11 years 
And the education that I got, you know, at that school is, is what I, you know, attribute largely to my success after moving here. I moved to the U.S. and I was like, wait, what? Like, this is so easy. And it was because the school over there was so difficult that it prepared me for like everything they were teaching here. So, you know, it, it was very dear to me that a lot of this money that we were raising from this NFT collection was going back to the archdiocese and the education program over there. Uh, you know, besides that, I did, uh, I donated a piece to uh, Imani, Imani. Imani is an incredible artist and she did uh, a charity drop last, I want to say November. Um, and I, I think that's called Jumpstart Designers. And, you know, that piece went to getting kids in kind of like lower income communities outfitted with iPads and, and different like creative programs and Adobe was a part of it. Uh, so that one meant a lot to me as well. And then lastly, I have, you know, what you mentioned is my, my super rare Genesis piece. Um, and that is honestly one of my favorite things that I've ever made. It's, it's a piece that I shot uh, here in Miami last year. It was an all Venezuelan production. We rented out a, a photo studio that was owned by Venezuelans. We had seven Venezuelan uh, immigrants served as a talent for the photo. Makeup artist is Venezuelan. Literally, you know, pretty much every everyone on set was Venezuelan. Uh, and what I did was I got a word cloud of what you know the results that you get when you search Venezuela on across all social medias, right? And and the word cloud that you get, you know, you'll see it in the piece. Uh, it's words like inflation, shelter, uh, corruption, hunger food and amongst the words there's probably there's not one positive word right and it's like this is what you search when you search the name of the country nothing else and everything you get is just like all of these words that are like essentially seeking for help uh so i got all of those and i i projected it over uh the seven immigrants and you know for a very long time we had seven stars on our flag and that's what it represents um so my piece is just a very like you know politically heavy piece that calls to you know a, a lot of the issues that have plagued Venezuela for all these years. We actually have the second uh, biggest migration of you know of people from our country uh, in the world, first uh, in the West, and you know we get almost no aid from any country. You know every other country that you see in the top ten that's had this sort of like migration gets a ton of help from all the big nations. Venezuela gets almost nothing uh, because we've been, you know, our, because our president has talked badly about the U.S. A, a few times. And because of that, there's all these sanctions that are put on our people. Um, so yeah, I put that piece up and it's my uh, genesis on Super Rare. And if it ever, ever sells, I'm, I'm donating 100% to various uh, Venezuelan, you know, humanitarian efforts here in the U.S. that, you know, get more food and legal counsel to a lot of immigrants. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an immigrant myself. I come from a family of immigrants. You know, I was dealing with legal problems for like 20 years when I came to the U.S. I know a lot of people are still dealing with it. So, you know, it, it's something that I'm very uh, passionate about. It's coming back. Sounds beautiful. Uh, great way to take something negative, turn it into something productive. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's extremely powerful and, and, and what you've been able to do and accomplish so far is, is, is extremely uh, reputable and, and commendable. And, you know, I know that you have a lot more going on. So, like, <laughs> how about you tease up some of the things on the roadmap that you want to, you know, share out that also might be um, keeping on people's radar? Yeah, for sure. So let's see. I have I, I haven't done any just like straight photography drops in a while. And I feel like, again, there, there's a lot of demand for that because a lot of people just really enjoy just kind of like my pure photography. So I have this collection coming out uh, hopefully very soon. I, you know, I, as I mentioned, I majored in philosophy and that's kind of like what made me who I am today. And it was like probably one of the best decisions I ever made was, you know, switching my major and, and studying kind of like the classic, you know, different philosophies from, you know, different cultures and, and language arts and all this. Um, and kind of like my dream was always to go to Greece, right? That was like my Mecca. Right? It was like, you know, the, the the motherland, the birth of a lot of uh, the philosophy that I studied. And as soon as I could, right after the pandemic, I, you know, took a trip to Greece and, you know, went to a bunch of the islands and then shot a lot of photography, uh, documentary photography, at just like a ton of different philosophy sites. Uh, so I'm making that into a very small photography collection, all black and white photos from Greece. Um, so I'll be doing that soon. 
And besides that, you know, I have a, I actually have a piece coming out this month uh, on a project curated by Coldy. Coldy is like one of my NFT heroes, one of like my absolute OGs. Uh, and he's doing a, he's curating a different artist to do a drop on the concept of transcendence. So I have a piece on there. Uh, I, I'm, I think I'm allowed to say this. I hope I am. Uh, I'm doing something for Freeze New York, the art fair. Uh, that's in a few weeks. And it also has to do a lot of with like spiritual art. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm very interested in this, like, uh, you know, the, the where all of these things meet, where like art, wellness, consciousness, spirituality, uh, you know, I've gotten very much into like sound healing and, and different frequencies. Uh, and so I've been kind of like making all of these soundscapes for all of my new pieces. So I'm doing something at Freeze Art Fair. And I'm talking to a, a few people in the city of Miami about creating just like a large form public, uh, you know, public installation. A few more well, things, but I think it? that's pretty good. That's it? I, I got Damn. a few more, but it's all? all right. Well, next time you're in uh, <laughs> LA, um, you know, we were grateful to be members of Rafi's Lounge. He came on our show and he did a Web3 NFT drop for his sort of meditation version of say uh soho house in in malibu uh, overlooking oh, cool. the water and uh i went over to his spot for uh, a sound healing mix with qigong uh last weekend and definitely melted my nervous system uh away so um <laughs> we, we gotta, up. yeah we gotta go over there together next time you're in la just drop me a note oh yeah no i'd love that Great stuff. Well, uh, it was a lot of fun hearing about everything you're up to. And uh, I think we want to move on to our next segment, Edge Quick Hitters, which gives a little bit in deeper insights into your, your history and, and your soul there. So Edge Quick Hitters are a fun and quick way to get to know you a little bit better. 10 questions. We're looking for a short, single or few word response, but feel free to expand if you get the urge. Are you ready? Yeah, that's it. All right. Number one, what is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Ever person? Oh man, that's kind of a an unpleasant story. But uh, I was not allowed to leave my house in Venezuela ever because we, we lived in such a dangerous neighborhood. And the first time I was allowed to leave, it was to buy my mom uh, medicine for she has a lot of back problems. And I was like super excited to leave the house and just go buy something. And I went to the store that was like two blocks away, and I got robbed at knife point. <laughs> so that was the vibe. I bought some uh some drugs from a mom's back and i got robbed right away so that was the first thing i ever bought <laughs> all right well this is a very unique first purchase that certainly <laughs> isn't uh a snickers bar uh, or a pokemon card <laughs> yeah that, that's my first remember like memory of ever leaving my house and buying something all right well thanks for sharing that uh <laughs> number number question number two what's the first thing you ever remember selling in your life selling uh let's see i probably school supplies uh, you know I, I was trying to make money and then just like you know if you don't bring a, a pen or something and i had something extra I'd try to make some quick bucks at school nice um, the umbrella the umbrella salesman in the rainstorm as it yeah were. yeah you know <laughs> these those education supplies <laughs> nice uh, i I, I'm that guy that never remembers to have an umbrella. So, um, you know, likely, likely target there. Uh, what is the most recent thing you purchased? The most recent thing I purchased, uh, I bought a bunch of stuff in Austin, a bunch of like vintage uh, thrift, thrift vines. Oh, actually, uh, I got a mood ring. I got a mood ring right here. I went to uh, this really cool toy store in Austin and they have just like a lot of really nostalgic uh, things and, and just like action figures and all these things. And I saw a mood ring. I was like, man, I haven't seen a mood ring in so long. So, I'm going to actually so, buy it. So Jay and gracefully uh, not, showed, us, showed us his uh, middle finger without giving us the middle finger. Um, yeah, yeah. It he, says he, <laughs> Nice. Uh, what is the most recent thing you sold? uh what was the most recent thing we sold uh I, I mean i'm guessing a bunch of uh we, we sold a bunch of animus key cards at our event people came and they, they minted a bunch of that and they also minted a bunch of the Bootstrap america uh nfts and someone offered to to buy the merch uh but we said no not yet uh but yeah just animus key cards awesome um so what is your most prized possession hmm 
like material <laughs> you pick uh, you pick let's see oh man that's a good one i have a collection of uh and this is kind of like one of the first things that came to my mind uh well besides uh, photos i have a lot of photos that you know mean the world to me a lot of photos of my mom and my dad and them together and photography is just like it for me right because you can't recreate those and i have those uh, but material, I have a collection of uh, kind of like philosopher busts that I got in Greece that I absolutely love. They're at the entrance of my house. And, you know, when, when you come in, it's like uh, Homer, Pythagoras, Aristotle, Socrates, Plato. And, you know, it's all it's kind of like all my favorite philosophers. And I got all these busts actually from, you know, these sacred sites in Greece. And I'm, I'm always like, yeah, I love those. Yeah, it's funny, every awesome. time you say Greece, I keep thinking that it's also the Spanish word for gray. <laughs> Greece. Um, <laughs> if you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical, service experience, um, that's currently for sale, what would it be? Damn, that's a really tough one. Uh, if I could buy anything in the world, uh, it would probably be just like a really epic house with like a bunch of guest houses and studios and you know places where I could be creative and bring my friends and have them be creative so maybe like you know a, a big house that also has like art studio complexes with a basketball court attached <laughs> beautiful yeah I've been having visions like that lately too where it's just like a central location that has all the cool things that you want and you kind of just figure there's It'll attract the other people that like yeah. those things. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right, nice. All right, next question is question number seven. If you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would it be? Uh, I would say empathy. Uh, a lot of people say I'm like deeply, deeply empathetic, and I, I tend to agree. I'm always like feeling how other people feel and just like very thoughtful of others emotions and I feel like a lot of people like empathy and, and besides that maybe my ability to focus I feel like we live in, in a society where people just lack attention span and no one can focus on anything for more than like a few seconds at a time and I'm one of those people that like if I'm focused on something I can focus on it for a really long time I can like you know read a whole book in one go I can like watch a tv and or a movie a long film and pay attention and not always be on my phone you know one of my pet peeves is like when you're talking to people and like every three seconds they're just like glancing at their phone <laughs> uh i think it's one of like the detriments of our society so yeah empathy and attention span yeah cool. i'm really impressed with this like balance between the explosion of creativity that you have with your ability to like get shit done you know <laughs> that is that is a that is a really cool combination i um, i mean I thank my mom. My mom would like lock me up in a room when I was growing up. She was, you have to do all your homework. You have to read everything and you cannot go out. And I would just have to like sit there and focus, you know? <laughs> uh, and I'm like that last generation where like, you know, we were still analog for a very long time uh, before cell phones and computers. So, you know, shout out to that. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me when I start got into my PhD and we, I, I forget how long the lecture things were, but I feel like it was like four hours, you know, straight of just watching someone talk about, you know, action potentials or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it was I, quite yeah, an exercise. Major, yeah. You know, I would sit there and listen to just people talk about like the most dense philosophy topics for hours and just like, <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. Next question. If you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would it be? Hmm, what would I eliminate? Um, let's see. I'm believe it or not, like it takes a lot to actually get me going. I have very low energy. I'm like an extremely low energy person. Uh, I wish I had more. I, I see people that are just like, you know, they wake up and they're like, oh, I'm ready to go. Like, I love sleeping. I could sleep 10 hours every day and, and be totally happy with that. And then it takes a lot of kind of like you know, now, now I'm a little bit better about caffeine, but for a very long time, I was just like, you know, 10 cups of coffee a day. So, you know, I, I need more energy. All right. Fair enough. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> Indeed. All right. What did you do just before joining us on this podcast after your very long nap? Oh man, I was, uh, 
looking at all these damn meme coins and I was like, what is going on? I was looking at a bunch of charts for the meme coins that are taken off today and just like browsing through all my, you know, catching up. So I, I got back from Austin. So I had a lot of Telegram chats to catch up on and everyone is apparently like Pepe billionaires right now. And I'm like, oh, I missed everything. I've been traveling too much. Uh, so yeah, just kind of like catching up on all my chats and emails and all the news uh, that have happened while I was gone. All right. So it's like that meme coins are back, huh? That's what it's looking. Well, I don't know. Anytime that sentence is uttered, I'm like, hmm, this feels like a like a local top. Anytime we say meme coins are back, that's when the Darth Maul candle comes in. So we'll see. <laughs> I, I, I miss that one too, man. Um, you know, too busy building and, and hanging out for uh, all this meme coin action. What ah. are you going to do next after the podcast? I'm going to do everything in my power to get a workout in. I normally I work out as soon as I wake up and, you know, I, I do this, like get sun, meditate, work out, go to the sauna. But today I had so much stuff and I had a few calls going, you know, before this that I said I was going to do it after. But man, working out late at night is like another type of dedication, but I'm going to really try to do it. Dope, dope. Yeah, I got in a F45 class, uh, my first time doing that in a long, long time. Normally, I just, you know, work out with my trainer at the gym. But nice. uh, it was it was a good way to start my Monday. So I'm right there with you, my friend. That's the best. Maybe if it's not windy, maybe I'll, I'll shoot some hoops. As there's a basketball court outside, so I can like get some shots in. If, if nice. you ever get a chance to hang out with me and Richard, you'll definitely get your workout in because we, we discovered during Outer Edge that we could we could get the workouts done, taken care of. Hundred <laughs> percent. I got okay. you. Let's go. I'm ready. And, All right. And for your uh, final and fun bonus question of the day, since you brought up meme coins, we got to go there. You know, what's the dumbest sounding meme coin you've ever bought? Oh no. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that once upon a time I bought something called like jizz rocket or cum rocket or something like that and it was the most embarrassing thing i've ever done <laughs> i think that thing made like a, a ten thousand x return to, I, I did one. well i did well i did well <laughs> on, the, on the jizz rocket and the indeed rocket <laughs> yeah sorry sorry to all my listeners sorry if i let you down right, but yeah I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dj and i i i dabble in the art of shit coinery for sure all right. Well, that concludes our hot topics. I mean, sorry, our quick hitters segment. Let's should we hit like one hot topic, guys? And before we move on? Uh yeah, let's let's do one. Do one? All right. We might as well cover this one. So William Shatner warps into Web3 with infinite connections NFT release. The original Star Trek captain and longtime Twitter crypto guy officially dropped the release infinite connections during Coindesk Consensus 2023. It is uh two collections. Uh, Cosmic Explorer with 2,500 NFTs that feature a Shatner 3D avatar paired with artwork that explores scientific themes like quantum physics and sonic vibrations. Each one also includes a physical action figure of Captain James T. Kirk, the role for which Shatner is best known, each hand signed by Shatner with a quote from the character. And then the other collection is the Timeless Voyager, which has 1,000 NFTs of 2D artwork, future tech, and the cosmos no action figures included, but select holders will have access to unspecified in real life opportunities. And uh, wow, that sounds pretty fun, man. We, we, we definitely got deeper into the mind of, of Bill Shatner uh, during Outer Edge. And, uh, and he's a deep guy, deep guy in deep space. Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. I mean, and it was really cool to see some 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 friends of his like Anthony um, Hopkins, you know, get on Twitter to support him. And, you know, he I, I just love the fact that he's just continues to to push the the limits of, of what's possible. And um, I think it's a great partnership with, with Orange Comet. We really appreciate the the amount of, of technical acumen and creative acumen and and you know, aesthetic acumen that they put into each of their projects. Like they're extremely precise and thoughtful with, with what they do with, with someone like uh, William Shatner. Um, you, you could easily botch that if you go too far south or too far north, but um, seems like this one um, you know, has been uh, relatively well received by the community. 
No, it sounds really cool. And I mean, he's, I shout out to him because he's kind of just been at every iteration of technology. And I feel like, you know, it, like what an iconic role in an iconic series and his fan base has always been through it all. And, you know, I've heard him speak. I saw him at uh, Outer Edge and I heard a bit of, uh, of what he said at Consensus. And it feels like he's genuine. And I feel like even if he's not, at least it's like a, you get a physical object that's signed. You know, there's like a memorability aspect to it. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and he's cursed out some people uh, that I dislike in my time too. So, so I, I like him. I'm a fan. Yeah, he, so, well, he's been he's been in blockchain for a while. Like this yeah. is not like he's just joining the space. He's not coming all in, of yeah. a sudden. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, you know, he's not he's not doing it for the money. He 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 really isn't. I mean, he's just having a good time. Yeah. No, I like that. You gotta check it out. I want to see these uh, scientific concepts. Yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. All right, maybe that's enough for for uh, hot topics because uh, we we uh, we ran a little bit longer on this this episode. Should we move on to next uh, next segment, guys? Yeah, let's do it. All right, next uh, we just want to make room for a little bit of a shout out. Uh, so JN, if there's anybody that you have uh, in your circle or or any projects you think would be worth uh, letting giving a little extra attention to, uh, maybe you could shout them out now. You got anybody in mind? Yeah, can I do two? Change yeah, my mind. I'm, I'll do two co founders. So I'll do the co founder of Animus, uh, Phil Yoon. He's like, man, right hand, just partner for a lot of things that I do. I, I wouldn't be able to do all this stuff without him. Uh, he's incredible. You can find him at Twitter at Phil Yoon. Uh, and the other one is uh, one of the directors of the Buscando America film, uh, Nello. Uh, I think on Twitter, he's at Nello GGN. Uh, just brilliant, brilliant filmmaker, and I, you know, we're we're truly going to disrupt uh, storytelling and Web three together. So shout out to those two, Phil and Nello. Much awesome. Love. Thanks for that. All right, well, uh, let's let's start to close out here. But uh, before we officially wrap, let's let listeners know where they can go to learn more about you and the projects you're working on. What's the best way? For sure. So I am at Jay and Silva on all social media platforms. Uh, I do have the the mythical and now controversial Verify blue check on Twitter still. <laughs> so if you're looking for me on Twitter, I do have the check. Uh, and Animus is at Made by Animus. Uh, we're that on every social media. And for the movie project, it's at Buscando America. Uh, but in America, the the E is a three. So it was kind of America with a three in America. We could not secure the other one. We really tried. But yeah. yeah. And or you could just go to my socials and like everything is pinned in my bio. So you can see you if you find me, you'll find all the other ones. Perfect. And uh, we also understand uh, you're doing some genera- generous giveaway uh, items. And uh, we'll let people know about those on the socials, how to grab them. But what, what were you interested in uh, in sharing? Yeah, for sure. So I'm giving away a few of uh, the Genesis collection from Buscando America, you know, a few photos from our explorations in Medellin. They're all one of one, uh, you know, photos taken by either me or the two directors of the film. Uh, kind of just a very raw and gritty uh, photography from Colombia, which, you know, I think they're incredible. A lot of people really like them. If you're into like documentary street style photography, I think you'll dig them too. Uh, And a lot of those locations or characters might make it into the film, which I think is really cool. Uh, And uh, on top of that, we'll be giving out a a few Animus key cards. So, you know, we'll get people hopefully excited to join the Animus ecosystem. Um, That'll be on Arbitrum. So, you know, make sure you you have some, some ETH bridged over on Arbitrum to be able to claim it. But yeah. Animus key card and a few photos from Wisconsin Medical Project. Thanks so much. Yeah, that sounds great. Medellin is such a cool place. Uh, so that, that's beautiful. All right. Well, we've reached the outer limit at the edge of NFTs for today. Thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventurers on this starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey all so much better. How? Go to Spotify or iTunes right now. Rate us. Say something awesome. Then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. Look us up on all major social platforms by typing Edge of NFT with no spaces and start a fun conversation with us online. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for great NFT content. Thanks for sharing this time with us today. 
The views and opinions expressed on the Edge of NFT podcast reflect solely those views and opinions of the show creators and its guests. We are learning as we go just like you. Please make sure to do your own research. Our podcast is not financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit all people. We understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk.